In today's video, I'm gonna teach you how to install and finish a beautiful live edge wooden slab as a countertop in your home. In today's world, we're using a lot of new different materials to finish off of our, our kitchens and our bars or our vanities. And one of the real popular materials now is the live edge slab of the tree. Now this one here is two and a half inches and it's nine feet long and it's made of ash. And in our part of the world, we've had something called the ash borer beetle, which has been eating away between the bark and killing these trees off. And so this is actually a piece of dead tree that was cut down and planed and turned into this countertop. So although we're using a whole lot of wood, it's something that wouldn't have a purpose otherwise. So we're repurposing a dead tree to make a countertop. Very cool. So the way we installed this countertop originally is really quite, you know, creative. Came up with my own little system using wood doweling, just a few bucks at the hardware store. And this is 7 eighths, and so what we did is we bought a drill bit that's just a little bit bigger, okay? So this is 15 sixteenths, and it's just a little bit bigger. So what we can do is we pre-drill holes in the, the wall that we made and on the back side of the countertop. We fill them both with glue, invert it, hammered it down with our hands, and that's how we installed that with some temporary supports. So my system for installing these wooden countertops is very basic. You don't need a whole lot of tools or skill. What you need is a one, piece of one by four, something that uses a straight edge. In this case, we have a leftover piece of uh, hanging rail from an Ikea kitchen, and this works great because it has lots of contour, guaranteed to be straight. And what we're gonna do is just lie these down. We're gonna measure this off. The back of our counter is almost eight feet long, and our lumber is exactly eight feet long. So we know that when we're screwing our doweling in, if I line that up with the edge of my countertop, I want to have a one inch overlap. So I'm just going to place this where I want it, get my spacing, and I'm going to fasten the one by four to my slab here. And I've got to leave enough room on the other side for my backsplash. All right. We're temporarily screwing this in place up against the straight edge to create a nice straight line. And because it's hardwood, it's, it's good to have an impact driver. There we go. There, now it's straight. So, we're gonna take our drill bit, which is just a little bit bigger than the dowels that we're using. My counter is this long my one inch overhang will be to here. So once we've got this prepped, we're gonna be able to cut the countertop off, but I don't want doweling too close to the edge, so I'm just gonna back it up a little bit. We're gonna go somewhere healthy, like eight inches from the edge. Okay, I'll mark that spot. And I wanna have about eight of these. So I'm gonna go every 15 inches so, what we're gonna do is we'll just mark off 15 inches. Now that we know it's gonna work up here, 25, 60 inch, and 75. All right. And we're gonna drill a hole through our one by four where we want the doweling to go. And then once we start into the hardwood, we'll stop and we'll drill that hole out in a minute. Now we're going to remove this. And we're going to flip this over, invert it, go flush with the end, knowing that the holes will line up leaving the countertop an inch longer. Okay, I want you to hold it here and here, okay, where the screw is, and then I'll manipulate the wood over here into position. So then I'm going to manipulate my wood to straight, and there we go. Now all my doweling will lined up. 
All right, so I had my assistant cut me a bunch of these little pieces of the doweling, an inch and a quarter, and he's using the palm sander to round off the edges, just to make installation nice and sweet. We don't want to have to be fighting to pound all the holes in. Now, an inch and a quarter, half of that, of course, is three quarters of an inch. So three quarters of an inch from that tip is the depth that I want to set the base at. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this tape just a little bit above three quarters on my bit. So that when I'm drilling, it acts like a little marking flag. All right, and this is just a great way to make sure you're not going too deep and going right through into the quartz. That would be bad. Now we're using this 1x4 as our template. So it was on the countertop, we flipped it over, installed it on our wall, and now we're going to mark into our plate with the drill. And this is a self-fit bit, so it sticks out nice and deep. We just want to get that center hole. Now we remove our 1x4 and finish drilling our holes. Again, we have the same depth set with the tape. The trick here is go a little bit deeper than halfway where the tape line is because we want to make sure that we have room for the glue to be on the top and the bottom and the countertop sit nice and flush. This is a softwood that we're drilling into. It's a lot easier. There we go. So our design is now 95 inches plus an inch overhang on each side, which is 97. So we're going to do, as I measured and marked that, and I'm going to take my 18 and an eighth, transfer that information here so we can cut it square. And we're going to cut the slab before we flip it over because we're using a skill saw which cuts from underneath. And if we cut this way, we're actually cutting through the finished side of the counter. That'll keep it from having any splinters and splits and tears. If we install it first and then cut it, we run the risk of tearing up the top of our counter just before we're trying to finish it. And that would be bad. And I'm gonna be cutting this tree from the side that's not falling off so that the saw doesn't run any risk of binding. Somebody needs to hold the weight but not, not let it twist towards me. Just one is fine. So now what we wanna do is be generous with our glue Fill our hole about one third full. That'll guarantee contact. The worst thing that happens here is it squeezes out and you can wipe it up with a rag. There's no such thing as too much in this scenario. You could definitely not use enough. I'm gonna put the dowel in the, the wall that we built, okay, as opposed to the countertop. And flip. Come on, get it in position. Back towards you, Nate. Okay, lifting this side, please. Very careful. And I've got a couple of set screws here. Now I just grabbed a couple of two by threes, put adjustable feet on them, and a quick little mending plate so that I can make some temporary legs. And down, and put some weight on that wood. There you go. Okay. Okay, just a real quick note. Once you've got the finish nice and sanded and there's no raised grain, just double check your edges. I mean, the edge of a counter is always gonna be dangerous to a certain degree, but sometimes when these come out of the planing machine, the edges are so sharp that if somebody who was short was to bump into it, they wouldn't just bump into it, it'd be sharp enough to actually split their skin open. So try to take care of the tots. 
Well, that's about all I can show you today. We're using this bar and table finish by Verithane. It's a two-part epoxy resin finish, which is amazing. It gives you that real thick glass look when you're done, just like you see in some of the pubs and restaurants you've been to. We're gonna wait until this finish is drying before we start working on the surface. And we're also going to be installing, you know, your classic black metal bars for some additional support. We're gonna put them about halfway back and bring them to the ground with a threaded rod. That way we can adjust it before we screw it to the surface. And that's gonna work wonderful. That'll give me a little peace of mind knowing that when people are putting weight on here that they shouldn't be here dancing on the counter. No one's gonna have an injury. Uh, if you'd like to see this finish, all you've got to do is click the link at the end of the video. You're going to have an opportunity to go and see the whole project video itself where we're going to have all the finished pictures and camera angles. And I'm sure you can enjoy that uh, as well. Um, we're looking forward. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this kind of finish. Put some in the comments below. If you've got a better product or experience using something different that you've got a favorite product, by all means, I'm open to suggestions. I'm just using this because this is what's available at my local building store. Uh, I'm open to suggestions. So that's it for today. Uh, thanks for joining us. And again, if you enjoyed this video, click the thumbs up button. You have no idea how important it is for that interaction. And if you have any questions, leave a comment below. I like to answer all of them still. It'll be about 100,000 subs before we have to start getting other people involved to help answer those questions. But for now, I do it on my own and I'm up every night taking care of that. So we'll see you next time.